Hello, Slurpy Derpy is a nice name. Um, we're going to attempt to edit your roles on live stream. I tried last night. I don't know if anybody here was in last night's stream, but it really didn't go well because the the stream was really jittery and awful and my computer wanted to die. Hello, Fabian. Shah Jahan. Welcome, guys. I'm going <laughs> to try and edit um, some raw files that you guys have sent me. And hopefully I can show you guys a thing or two in Lightroom. I'd like to show you some stuff in Photoshop, but we'll see how well my computer perf performs. Hey, Ant. Greg. Royston, how are you doing? Okay, there's enough of you guys in you know. I'm going to start editing Milky Way from a bottle class six. Um, but yeah, these are like these are some of the roles that you guys sent me when I recently asked you to send me some raw files. So I'm gonna start with um let's start with this image here. So this is sent in by Alessandro Ferrantini from Tuscany and I don't know why it's so blurred. Oh, the JPEG's really low quality. Um, but I, I love these trees and I love the Milky Way. There's just so much dead space on, on the left of the image and the top of the image. The camera settings, let's have a look at the raw file. So the settings were f2.8, 30 seconds, 1600. Yeah, they're good settings. There's nothing you can change about that. But in the composition, you got the Milky Way and the trees and Jupiter. But all of this just feels so pointless on the outside of the edge. <laughs> um, yeah, so if I can just try and show you what I'm talking about. Um, like, all of this around here is, is pointless. So I would frame the image, like, here. Maybe with a longer lens. And I'm gutted he didn't shoot a little bit to the right. But I'm going to crop the hell out of this image. Because I want to get those trees. I'm going to stick with the 3 to 2. I really want to get those trees and the Milky Way sort of centred in the composition. It's going to be annoying now because... The resolution's not going to be very good of the image, but I think the composition is going to be so much better. Something like this. And I'm going to bring some detail out of the shadows, bring some detail out of the blacks. Lift the whites to give it a bit of a pop. Mm, play with the highlights to see what happens. I'm going to leave them alone, to be honest. And um, with the white balance, I always check auto first, just to see what Lightroom thinks. Um, should be a good white balance. Which might be a little bit too warm, so I'm going to cool it down. Just a little bit. Yeah, I'm hoping the computer's going to work today. My fans, like, <laughs> my fans already sound like an aeroplane taking off. And I'm going to get rid of the noise now. There's a lot of noise you can see in the sky there. And it doesn't help that I've cropped the image quite heavily to get better position, but... I'm just going to do maybe like 30 on the noise reduction. Come on, computer, you can do this. <laughs> Hello, guys. Um, so, yeah, that's the composition and the basic settings. <sighs> Might even crop a little bit more in a minute. Um, but I want to darken the sky. So, to darken the sky, I'm going to drag a radial filter. I'm obviously not going to use these settings. <laughs> Um, and instead of dropping the exposure, which darkens everything, 
I'm just going to increase the contrast a little bit. So that's not going to ruin the Milky Way. And I want to make the Milky Way pop a little bit, so I'm going to take an adjustment brush. I'm going to bring the flow down to 20 so I can brush it in gently. And what I'm going to do is bump the highlights, bump the whites, and maybe add a little bit of clarity as well. And with a slightly bigger soft brush, I'm just going to slowly paint over the Milky Way. And it's turning pink because the tint is <laughs> completely wrong. Um, how's the stream going, guys? I think it's starting to go a little bit bad, but let me know. <laughs> Has it frozen? Anyway, I'm just going to brush on the Milky Way. And those of you who know me will know that I do love adding a vignette to my image and I'll use the radial filter. And just increase the contrast on the edges. Not too much. Maybe drop the blacks a little bit. Stream is working, so far so good. Perfect. Freezes sometimes. Yeah, my <laughs> my laptop sounds like it's about to blow up any moment now, but we'll keep going. Anyway, I've added a vignette to that image. And I think the colors are quite boring. So I'm gonna do some split toning and with the night images i really like putting blue into the shadows just to cool things down and make it look a bit more like night time nothing too crazy you can see i'm right at the bottom saturation like nine percent just to add a touch of blue to the shadows and then maybe in the highlights the opposite color in color harmony the yellow Something around there, and that's done a nice touch of colour to the Milky Way. So that's before split toning, that's after. It's only a very subtle change, just to cool things down a little bit. And then... Um, when I want to saturate an image in Lightroom, I always use this blue primary saturation slider in the calibration tab right at the bottom it just seems to add a much more pleasing saturation to an image compared to um, the vibrance and saturation at the top so that's with the blue primary saturation it just doesn't look too garish and horrible you can see it brought out the pink in the Triffid and Lagoon Nebula quite nicely I usually use white balance to get the sky a little bit blue. Yeah, but it kind of makes the whole image blue. I like just having blue in the shadows, like in the dark areas, um, rather than having a completely blue tint on the image. Um, but this is... This would be my edit. I mean, this was the... The edit that Alessandro sent me. It's a really low-res JPEG, unfortunately. But... Um, for me, there was just too much dead space. Oop, too much dead space around the edges of the frame. Cropped it. I think my computer is struggling, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'll put. The 
Alpha 6000. They're really good. Really, really good. Especially for crop sensor cameras, and they're like really small, and you can find something for your budget. They're really, really good. Mm. RIP laptop fans. <laughs> R.I.P. to my laptop. I can hear your computer phones. <laughs> yeah, the laptop's melting, guys. <laughs> Come on, computer. <laughs> Maybe if you all blow really hard, it'll cool down my CPU. JTW doing the astro mode. Yeah, boy. He's good, Mark. He Mark just astro modded my A7 III and done a really good job. A really good job. Um, let's find another image to edit. See what else you guys sent me. There was one from the Dolomites that I quite liked. Where was that? Where's that gone? I can't find it. Ah, there it is. More frozen than Iceland chicken. <laughs> yeah, I need to buy a desktop PC because I really want to do the live stream. Like I can make a video of me editing, but it's really nice to have you guys in the chat and live. Um, how big of a difference do you find the Astro? How big of a difference does the Astro mod make? Um, I mean, it's only for the hydrogen alpha. So if you take a picture of Orion, you get a little bit of pink and red color, um, and the Milky Way gets a little bit of a Pinky Pop, especially in the Triffid and Lagoon Nebula. Any news on the case filter? Actually, I've got some really exciting news about the case filter. Um, yeah, this was a... Uh, so I've, we finally had some... We had some big issues with the case filter. I had to go back to square one, but they finally fixed everything and it should be uh should be coming soon um so the the, the case filter is back on track and hopefully soon the star glow filter will be ready um i'm really excited for that anyway let's just take a look at this image from constantinos and this was taken with a canon 60 the og camera with a 17 to 40 f4 so it'll be quite interesting to see what an F4 lens can do. Um, stars on the edge are a little bit aberration, or you can really see it there. Um, but let's see what an F4 lens can do, because it's pretty dark in the Dolomites. I'm just going to lift the shadows and the blacks. Give it a little pop with the whites. Hey, Marina. Hola. Oh, that's too much. And then I'm going to bring the highlights down. Maybe do some lens correction. Can I talk more about the case filter? So there's, there's a new filter which I've designed that makes the bright stars glow and blow. It's, it's going to be called the Star Glow Filter. And it was almost ready. Like I made an order for like 100 at the end of last year and then the Chinese government um, introduced some new laws which meant we couldn't use the manufacturing filter proce process that we used to make the filter um, but we've worked around that now and they should be they should be here soon hey Mike nice to see you buddy Hey, 
If you astro modify your camera, is there a chance you will destroy it? Yes, there's there's definitely a chance. With my 60s, it's going to be pretty good in the HA. Yeah, it's definitely going to be desktop computer soon. Right, I'm going to vignette this image. Because I love a good vignette. So I'm going to take a radial filter. And I'm going to drag it over the image. Change these settings because they're not what I want. Ciao, ciao, happy Easter. Um, so with the vignette, I'm just going to increase the contrast. PC specialists. All right, I'm going to have to take a look. Yeah, my <clears throat> my laptop's really, really starting to struggle again, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to drop the shadows and maybe the blacks a little bit. You're celebrating New Year 2077. What? Ah! So with the vignette, I've kind of put it off to the side a little bit because you got the the hut, the church, sorry, and the Milky Way right on the edge. Um, so I don't want to darken the Milky Way too much. <coughs> I think I'm going to use my presets to speed things up a little bit. Any deep space objects to shoot without a modified camera? Um... You could try the Leo triplet in Leo, maybe. Um, yeah, you'll struggle with HA targets if you haven't got that HA sensitivity. But if you want a HA target, try the California Nebula. Um, I'm going to go with the foreground pop. Oh. Foreground pop. Bring up these rocks a little bit and the church. How much of my workflow is in Lightroom and Photoshop? Seventy thirty. Um, probably the other way around. Like thirty percent Lightroom, seventy percent Photoshop, and. Milky Way pop, just to give the Milky Way a bit of a pop. Hello from Ukraine. <coughs> um, a modified 60 is a huge difference, yeah. If you want to see the kind of difference it makes, check out Adrian Mordweet because he shoots with an Astro modified 60 and it, it definitely makes a huge difference. Why do I use radial filter for vignette instead of post crop vignette? Um, I use the vignette in the effects to fix the vignette of lenses, but I use a radial filter for um, vignette because you can control the shape. You know, you might want it slightly off axis or towards one corner. Or in the case of this image, I wanted the vignette to be on this edge and not on the Milky Way. So. Have I started to look at auto guiding? Yeah, I have. Um, I actually recently bought um, a guide cam and a guide scope. So I need to, to do that soon. Uh, 
Uh, I feel like we're frozen again, guys. What's the modeling company called? Um, it's JTW Astronomy. Can you stack telephoto moon frames with a foreground in Starry Landscape Stacker? Mm, I don't have a Mac, so I've never used Starry Landscape Stacker, but my guess is no, because it only works with stars. I think my webcam is frozen. Anyway, I might add another vignette to this image. That sort of shape. Oh, that's really strong. Something like that. <coughs> um, let's try another image. Is it is it still working? I know my webcam's frozen, but don't worry about the webcam. Where can you send my rolls? Um, I'm not taking any more rolls right now and it's going to be in the future it's going to be my patreons only who can send me rolls i just want to do this one um as a one-off Ooh, let's do this one so this is yeah so this is by a guy called risto come on computer <coughs> um, do I only use Lightroom? No, I use Photoshop quite a lot. I'm not going to do it right now, otherwise my yeah, you see my computer's not very, not very good. <laughs> um, how do I balance my Star Adventure Pro? Well, you have to put your camera in the orientation that you're going to be shooting before you balance it and then you just move the counterweight until it doesn't rotate um this this image is by a guy called Risto Leskinen and go and check him out on Instagram because I really love his work he's got these amazing images under the aurora with the with a lantern and I love them but I think there's a lot of dead space here on the right edge of the frame. You know, there's not much going on. So I'm going to crop in um, just a little bit. Yeah, I'll bring him a little bit more. And a lot of this foreground is quite necessary as well. So that's a lot better. Maybe a little bit from the top. Yes, but now there's too much dead space on the top left. Am I gonna put this up later? Yeah, I think it automatically saves to the um to the channel to be honest. I'll leave it up for a while. But the, I mean the quality of the stream is so bad. Um so yeah the auto white balance in this case is too warm for me and too pink. I'm gonna bring that tint down. Um Oh, it's actually quite difficult to balance. Do, 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 do. Yeah, his his images are really good, right? I love his work. Um, that looks a lot better. Let's try forty four hundred. Yeah, so that's really nice. I'm gonna bring the highlights down 
to try. I was hoping to remember some detail in the lantern, but it's completely blown up. I'm really sorry, guys. My computer's going so slow. The last live stream didn't auto save. It did save. I just deleted it because it was terrible. <laughs> Um, I'm going to use my noise reduction preset just to speed things up a little bit. Oh, there's not much you can do to this image. It's so good. I'm going to vignette, obviously. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and take this image into Photoshop. Um, just to add a little touch of magic because there's really not much I can do. He, he's done such a good edit anyway. Um, a contrast. Mm. Maybe it's too cool. I'm gonna go for forty five hundred. Let's try and open this in Photoshop <laughs> and see if my computer melts. Did you get my image with the iridium flare? Um, maybe, maybe, oh, you, you can still see my webcam, really, because it's, my webcam is even frozen for me, so that's quite surprising, to be honest. <sighs> Okay, so Photoshop seems to be working. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add just a little glow to this image. So I've created a new layer. I'm going to go to soft light as the blending mode. And I'm going to create a brush with the same color as the lantern. Got a nice big, nice big soft brush. And I'm just going to change that to, let's go with 15% opacity. And I'm just going to add a bit of a glow to the light, maybe on the foreground, just to accentuate that light because it's, it's really cool. Um, so that's before... And that's after. So it just adds a bit of a bit of an extra glow. Um, praying for your laptop. <laughs> so that's added just like a little bit of an extra glow. And I think I'm gonna. I don't want the light to be behind him too much because that just doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna take a low opacity eraser. I'm just gonna. Keep the light off his back, basically. There we go. And can you see how that's just like that's before, that's after? It's not something I'd normally do, but I think it works quite well with this image. And I also use um, Color Effects Pro quite a lot. Um, it's now owned by DxO Mark. It used to be owned by Google. When it was Google, it was free. Um, now you have to pay for it, but I use the old free Google version. Um, but I really like Color Effects Pro 4. So, Pro Contrast, for example, um, you can add it nice bit of contrast to the image it gives it a nice pop but it's also got this correct color cast um, which is always worth checking just to see if your image has a bit of a color cast and I think in this one here my white balance was too cool you can see this is kind of separated the colors quite nicely so I'm gonna keep that um, 
Dark and Light in Center is a really good vignette. And you can place the center of the vignette. So I'm obviously going to place the center on his uh, lantern. And you can change the size of the vignette. Oh, so that's like really centered on his lantern, which looks quite cool. And that's quite a spread big vignette. But I think I'm going to really hone in on his lantern because it's such a cool feature. And that's before dark and light and center. That's after dark and light and center. That looks really nice. I love a good vignette. You know how much I love a vignette. Um, Samyang 135 new or original Canon 70 to 200. Same price. Um, hmm, that's a good question. The Samyang 135 is incredible for the price. But then that Canon lens is pretty good as well. I don't know. Wait, is that computer melting smell? What is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does smell like it's melting. But this image looks awesome, so we're going to carry on. Um, ooh, Glamour Glow might work quite nicely. Yeah, look at that. Just has a really nice soft, soft glow to the image. I like that. Um, I'm going to reset the saturation. And I'm gonna take the glow out of the sky. I don't want the I don't want the sky to glow. Just the uh, just the foreground around the light. So that's a nice little glow. Cool. Um. Ooh, you know, contrast color range is always worth checking. And I always reset the contrast and reset the brightness to 0% each. Um, color contrast about 69 and then just try different color contrasts. It can really change the shape of an image. I mean, that looks horrible with the greens. That looks better. That's given a nice little pop to the Aurora. Ooh, that looks nice. But sometimes the color contrast can really shift the mood and the flow of an image that looks awful with the greens but I think it was about here yeah that just adds a nice little pop to the aurora so that's that's without and then that's with that just adds a nice little nice little pop to the aurora I don't want to do too much so I'm going to bring the contrast down and yeah just to show you guys this was before color effects and that was after oh that's good isn't it all i did was like pro contrast a little bit of contrast dark and light and centers a vignette a little bit of glamour glow and some color contrast look at that difference oh that's really nice i love this image <coughs> Um, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Like the autumn effect. Yeah, it's quite similar to the autumn effect. Just add a little bit of a soft glow. We've gone to VHS quality. Oh, no. Um, how long did it take you to get these skills? Um, a few years, I guess. And, and, like, the first few years of editing, I was just, like, really experimenting and playing around. And over time, you realize the things that you you repeat, like stuff that you do to pretty much most images, and then you develop this workflow. And um, Those green lights in the sky have ruined the night sky. <laughs> what kind of heathen are you? Jawad. Good man, Jawad. Plug in the subscribe. Yes, guys, subscribe. Um, what else can we do to this image? Um, not a great deal. I mean, zooming in is one thing that's kind of distracting me. And it's this red light here. So if I zoom out, do you see how the, just that little bit of red just catches your eye? Uh, it just acts as like a distraction. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a new layer. First thing I'm going to do is a spot removal tool. And with a spot removal tool, 
I'm just going to get rid of the main light source. Now we need to get rid of this red color. So, um, let's try. I'm going to try a hue saturation. I'm going to change it to the red channel. Bring the saturation all the way down. All the way down. Maybe the lightness as well. That's going to do it. So I brought all the lightness all the way down. There's a little bit of a magenta fringe on the edge. So I'm going to come into the magenta channel. I'm going to bring the saturation all the way down. I'm going to bring the lightness down. Now I don't want this to affect the entire image. Well, maybe I do. No, I don't, because it's it's completely changed the colour of his jacket. Look at this, guys. <laughs> maybe that's good, I don't know. What do you think, guys? Red jacket or black jacket? It looks quite cool in black. But what I'm going to do is... Um, just to show you... On the layer mask for the hue saturation layer, where I just reduced the reds, I'm going to control i to invert it. And then pressing B for brush, make sure my brush is white, low opacity. Well, I could do a high opacity, to be honest. And I'm just going to paint over this red trees to get rid of those. So now they're no longer distracting. See that? So goodbye, red trees. It was nice knowing you. And I might, there's a bit of pink in the foreground. I might just. Maybe not that strong. Maybe a really soft opacity. Just to get rid of some of that magenta in the foreground. Yeah, that's okay. Um, HLVGPS plugin for deep sky images. I'll have a look. I'm not a huge deep sky guy. Royston Palmer, when is your photo view available? I'm working really hard on the photo view book right now. It's quite nice. The lockdown so I could just really focus on the book um, we're aiming for September the ultimate goal is before Christmas basically but we're aiming for September right now and you find Starlink as bad as people say not yet but you will if they carry on what are the best manual settings on the camera for stars I always use f 2.8 ISO 3200 and 20 to 30 seconds Red, red, it pops. Oh, we got one for black, three for red. Any news on the merch? I'm still waiting for my artist friend to design the merch. And I'm literally going to send her a picture. Um... What external display am I running for my laptop? It's a BenQ SW 2700 PT, I guess. Um, do you know what? This reflection here, I think, is actually a little bit too distracting. So I don't know whether to crop it or... No, you know what? I'm going to hide it. And I'm just going to take a spot removal tool. And just get rid of that big one there. See what happens. Yeah, there we go. So I don't mind a little bit, but that big one was really distracting. Or maybe I do mind these two big ones gotta go now. There we go. Um I think this image is finished. So let me show you a before and after Photoshop. So that was the before. That was the after. It didn't really do that much. But it's such a nice image. Such a nice image. So, guys, if you see the name there, Risto Leskinen, seriously get on Instagram. Search for Risto Leskinen. Go and follow that guy because his Aurora images are beautiful. What? That's my son, your youngest fan. The one you promised Astro. Do you ever sit and look at an image after you've edited it and think, damn, I'm good? <laughs> I, there's probably been two or three images 
where after I finished editing it, I've just sat there and gone, what? That's like, I did that? Like, it wasn't more about me being good. It was like, whoa, I captured that. I saw that. That's insane kind of thing. Um, And yeah, it's very rare and it does happen, but... Which one shall we edit, guys? Which one shall we edit? Oh, there's one of Mount Rainier, which could be... Erwin Chung. Was it Greg Ward that said you sent me something? EFG. No, I don't think I got yours, Greg. Um... Let's... I did. Oh, actually, guys, you know what? I've got one here which is like foreground and sky. So I'll show you blending. So that's the foreground. That's the sky. Let me just reset these actually. Um, so. <coughs> Excuse me. So this image was sent by a guy called AJ from. Bryce Canyon, uh, I'm assuming in the United States of America. Um, yeah, so it's a, a foreground and sky blend, same tripod location, which for me is cool. Um, but I just found very warm, very saturated, a little bit crunchy in the edit. Um, so I'm going to have a go editing this one. And he sent me a foreground. So this was nine two hundred and twenty five seconds, F two point eight, ISO a thousand. And then he took me he sent me one image of the sky. Now, if you're gonna do a long exposure foreground, at least blend it with a long exposure sky or stack in, like do five or six or eight images stacked for the night sky, because now you're gonna have a really clean foreground and a very noisy sky. So if you get a stack in a long foreground and you haven't got any moonlight or aurora in the sky, just do a long exposure on a tracker for the sky. And if you don't have a tracker, take six to eight images and stack them for noise reduction. Um, but for me, this white balance is way too warm. I'm guessing he used daylight in the camera. And there's a lot of guys who think or, you know, who claim that Daylight is the scientifically correct white balance, but I don't adhere to that, to be honest. And looking at the stars, you can see they're not perfectly straight. So there was definitely some sort of tripod wobble. Maybe it was in the snow or the mud. Um, but the tripod wasn't still for the entire exposure, and that's why the foreground is not perfectly sharp. But before I go into Photoshop, I'm going to fix the white balance. Yeah, Lightroom's done a really good job there. Um, I fix the white balance on the other one. Thirty-seven fifty. Okay, and let's do the lens correction. What lens was it? There's a Kina eleven to twenty. To a Kina, it's got the eleven to sixteen. Yeah, that'll do. And then the sky image, I'm going to do the profile correction as well. <coughs> Once my computer stops dying. How is the stream, guys? Is it okay? Can you see what's going on? Can you hear me? I don't know how many people are in here right now. 146. It's pretty cool. Um, but this is the sky image, so I'm going to do the Tokina lens correction. And it's just so underexposed. I wish he'd sent me multiple images for the sky to stack. Um, I'm going to use my noise reduction presets. And I'm going to open both of these in Photoshop. Alan, what is your astrophotography post-processing inspirational photographers? Ooh, that's a good question. Thank you for the good question. 
Um, I have a few. I mean, Yuri Boletsky is like he for me. He's like the granddaddy. He's the master of um, landscape astrophotography editing. I love his images. Um, Adrian Maudry also really really good on the editing. Not too overdone. Very nicely done. Um, also. I hope I'm saying his name right. There's a guy called Peter Hrolek, which is like P-E-T-R and then H-R-O-L-E-K, I think. He's got some absolutely insane images, like really, really good images. Um, I'm going to edit these as layers in Photoshop. So yeah, Yuri Boletsky, um, Adrian Mudui, Peter Hrolek. Uh, I do like Michael Shane Bloom's Astro images as well. He's just really, really good at editing and color harmony and just this real sort of sense of perfection. Um, yeah, I'd get, those are my favorite Astro shooters for sure. Yeah, my webcam's not actually frozen, guys. I'm just really good at staying still. Right, let's blend these two images. Um, Oh, they're not aligned. That's naughty. I'm not aligned these manually. Damn it. Wait, which was the foreground? Okay, so that's the sky. This is the foreground. Um, so, crop that in. So I just manually aligned the two layers, basically by lowering the opacity of the top layer so I can see through it. And I'm going to make a quick selection with the quick selection tool. Cool. And then layer mask. Invert the layer mask because it's the wrong way around. Um, that's not a bad job. But because they're just, I mean, the foreground's so clean, and then the sky is underexposed and full of noise, but I'm going to try and lighten the sky layer, because it doesn't blend with the horizon so good. Um, so I'm going to do a curves adjustment, just to brighten the sky a little bit. Kind of getting there. I'm going to protect the highlights by bringing the top of the curve down. Let's see, I'm just trying to blend it with the horizon a little bit better. What I can do um, is maybe on a new layer on top with the soft light blend mode. And I'm going to sample this color here. I'm going to brighten the color. I'm just going to. Oh, God, that's the wrong. I need a brush. Um, with a brush tool, soft brush, low opacity on a soft light layer. Oh, God, that's way too extreme. Yuri Boletsky. Yes, Yuri Boletsky. He is amazing. Um, so I'm just trying to blend this horizon a little bit better and I've just got a soft light layer with a soft brush and a really light sort of yellow color set the feather of the layer to be a bit softer over oh, the layer mask yeah you could do um, but it's not the it's not really the feather that's stopping it from blending it's the difference in contrast and noise um, but that looks a little bit better now. 
Stream froze. Yeah, it keeps freezing. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, let's. I just t turn the webcam off, and now my computer is really struggling. Michael Shainbloom's time lapses. Yeah, my. I remember seeing Michael Shainbloom's time lapses like six or seven years ago, and they were so good. Like, I used to just leave them on my screen when I was revising for my exams in university. Um, his time lapses are so good. But yeah, see if you guys can find Petter Hrolek and, and Adrian Moore would tweet as well. Wait, I'll just write their names. Um. Yeah, check out all those guys. Um, okay, guys, Photoshop's frozen right now. Lightroom's still working. Photoshop has officially frozen. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you, Brent. I'm pretty good. Um, okay, we're back. I think Photoshop's back. Right. Let's, hmm. um, so I'm going to use a mid-tones one mask. If you don't know about luminosity masks, you really should start learning about luminosity masks. But I've just took a mid-tones mask, and I'm going to use that to darken most of the image, bring the highlights back. That's done a really nice job. Oh yeah. And you know what? I think I'm going to jump back into Color Effects Pro 4. Who's in the chat, guys? Ask uh, ask me some questions. The correct spelling is Peter Horalek. Thank you. I completely forgot how to spell his name. Peter Horalek. Yeah, he's so so good. Um, so I'm going to do a graduated neutral density to darken the sky. That's actually done a really good job straight off the bat. Nice. I'm going to do that. Oh, has my stream disappeared? No, it's still going. You're doing a great job, Alan. Thank you. Um, I'm going to use a darken light and center to do my vignette. Um... I'm going to shift the center a little bit towards the Milky Way. Something like that. Don't want to brighten too much. Um. Something like that. And what else can we do here, guys? Would you recommend a 4K monitor? Um yeah yeah why not I think mine is 2.7k which is quite nice but um, any tips for shooting the Milky Way from a bottle 4 or 5 mm -hmm. I have to shoot towards a city that's a 7 oh yeah that sucks I mean the, if you have to shoot towards a bottle 7 you're in a bad place you'll get a good Milky Way high in the sky but not low on the horizon I'm going to do another graduated neutral density filter this time. And shift the blend. I don't want it that dark. Maybe I do. And I'm going to do a pro contrast to try and bring back some of this foreground so that the dynamic contrast normally lifts a bit of detail of the dark areas. So I'm going to check the color cast. Mm, yeah, something like that. I 
think that's enough for Color Effects Pro right now. What's my favorite lens? The Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master is insanely good. It's probably the best lens that's ever been made for landscape astrophotography. What's my next big adventure after we're free? <laughs> Let's see. I really want to go down to New Zealand and Australia and then Asia. I'm really edging towards that right now. And I also want to do like a big USA trip. Um, I say that as I'm editing an image from Bryce Canyon. I'm going to crop this image because it just seems to be nothing going on in the left side of the frame. So I'm going to try and bring this over and bring a bit more attention to the Milky Way. I want to keep this valley though. This valley is really cool. Mm. Something like that. Could I paste their names? I already posted their names. Just scroll up in the chat. What's my favourite image of my own and why? Oh, man. I'm not very really good at picking favourites. I have a few favourites. The South Stack image I really like. Um, And there's an image from a salt lake in... Chile, which I really like. Um, yeah, I'm not really good at picking favourites. Have you or would you ever visit Scotland? Oh, I was in Scotland. Uh, I was in Scotland in February. It was a very short trip. And I didn't get any clear skies, so... That sucked. But I really want to come back to Scotland. It looks amazing. Alan, sky tracker versus image stacking for the sky. How much do you use each of them? Sky tracker versus image stacking. So basically, if it's windy, I do stacking. If it's not windy, I'll get my tracker out. That's usually the main influence. But the stack is always a little bit better. Um, I'm going to come into a mid-tones mask again. So I'm using a mid-tones mask with the curves, and that's just going to help me brighten the Milky Way without being too crazy. I'll show you another trick for the Milky Way, guys. If you make a curves layer and then take the hand with the arrows, you can sample the Milky Way core. And you can see on the graph, it shows you the point that it corresponds to. But if you click and then drag up, that's going to brighten the core. And then if you go into the dark nebula, so if you come into the horse nebula, and then click there and click down. So you're adding like targeted contrast to the Milky Way. But it's obviously like, it's a bit extreme. So I like to invert the layer mask and make it black. And then with a soft white brush and a low opacity, you can just brush that contrast into the Milky Way. What's been my favorite place to photograph? Hmm. Um, I was going to say La Palma, but La Palma got a little bit boring for me because all the shots start looking a bit similar now. And there's no new compositions. So probably Chile. I mean, the Atacama Desert was in amazing. You can find so many different landscapes. Like another world. Did you ever get your money off Saga? Uh, I got paid for the talks, but they didn't give me any sort of compensation for the illness and the hospital stuff. Do you know Janik on Instagram? I think I do. He was chatting to me a few weeks ago. We had a crazy time at the Sutherland Observatory. In ah, Janik, yeah, yeah. Um, and he does a lot of time lapse and work in Istanbul, I think. Um, he's got some really, really nice images. Yeah, is it Janik or Janik? I guess it's Janik. What's on your playlist during long shoots? Ah, that's a good question. Um, when I'm out doing astrophotography, I like to have, like, really chilled out, spacey kind of music. So people like uh, Tycho. Um, I love Bonobo. I love Mogwai. Check out Mogwai, Scottish band Mogwai. They are amazing. Um, what's his name? What's his name? Um, oh. 
have to I think this is more I'll let you know how is the patented cloud hoover still working <laughs> yeah I need some new batteries for it have you checked the Sony 20 millimeter yes I have it it's really good it's not as good as the 24 millimeter but it's still the best 20 millimeter you can get for Sony right now um, and I'm gonna make a video about it soon um, I'm gonna use a color balance layer here guys because there's, there's not much color going on and I'm gonna put some blue into the shadows yes that's exactly what I wanted so yeah, I just want to cool those shadows. That looks nice. And then in the highlights, I'm going to add a bit of yellow. There we go. That's nice. That's made the Milky Way look really nice. F1.4 stopped down a bit. Yes. Always, I, I, the Sony 24mm 1.4, I always step down to F2. Most other lenses, like the Samyang, I step down to 2.8. Did you ever try Topaz Denoise AI? I've tried it a few days ago. Very basic, doing a great job of casual denoising. I tried Topaz Denoise and um, I found that it worked really well in some areas of the image and then in other areas of the image it made like really funky artifacts. But I'm going to use... Mm, I'm going to use Nick Define to get rid of the image and to get rid of the noise in this image here visit Newfoundland yeah I really need to go to the USA especially the west coast yeah I, I really really need a USA trip you should also check out Churchill Manitoba in Canada the Northern Lights I know I know I know I don't want to talk about traveling right now because um, you know we're all stuck in lockdown my Dolomites, uh, I, I like my Trechime image from the Dolomites, but I hate all the other images. I really want to go back to the Dolomites and update my portfolio. You said stacking is a little bit better. No, tracking is a little bit better. You get better results with the tracker because you get fainter details. You get more detail with the tracker. Stacking is good for reducing noise, but it doesn't unveil extra detail. But if it's windy, you can't use a tracker. You have to do stacking. Um, I'm going to sharpen this image a little bit, so I'm just going to duplicate this layer, and I'm going to go to Filter, Other, High Pass. Mm, I'm going to stick with four pixels. I normally do about three or four pixels. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. And you can see that just adds a little bit of sharpening but I'm actually gonna paint black on the layer mask to reduce the sharpening on the horizon because there's too much noise there I don't want to sharpen that noise um, as soon as lockdown is over I'm heading to the Elan Valley I'm really worried about what's gonna happen when lockdown finishes because everyone is gonna head out it's going to be difficult to find a quiet spot, I think. Do I primarily use an Astro Modified camera? Uh, I do now, yeah, pretty much. Um, generally, as the panel is the TK Actions V4 panel. It's basically for luminosity masks. Are you probably using this for them? Will I test the EOS RA? Yeah, I have. And my webcam's not working, but I've got an EOS RA. Canon sent me an EOS RA to test out, and then the lockdown happened. <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. Anyway, this is my... I guess this is the final edit. If I show you the original image from AJ... That was his edit. For me, it was very warm, very saturated and grungy. Um, so in my version, do you know what? I might saturate the yellows, actually. So with the saturation, I'm going to target the yellows because yellow is a color that should be quite saturated anyway. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah, I like that. Um, so that was, that was AJ's original edit. 
I mean, you know, you've got snow on the ground, so you want a cool white balance to to make the image feel cool. Um, but yeah, a little bit too saturated for me. So that was my my version. Cropped it on the left a bit as well. I really enjoyed editing that image. Um, Nico 20 mil is amazing. Yeah, I feel it's pretty good. Who is your most favorite workshop participant? Cough. <laughs> There's a guy called Gus. He's really nice. Um, stacking isn't letting more photos of light in. Tracking is letting more light in. Yeah. It's a good way of putting it. A good starter tracker. Um, definitely the move, shoot, move tracker. Hey, Charlie! <laughs> yes, Charlie. Um, am I going to use Canon again? Not for the foreseeable future. Canon just sent me an EOS RA um, to test, but I, I'm really happy with my Sonys right now, and the new lenses for the Sonys are amazing, so it'll be a while before I go back to Canon, unfortunately. Good brand of tracker, doesn't break the bank. Check out the Move, Shoot, Move. Or you can make your own. Just search for Barn Door Tracker and you can make your own. Got to go to Zion. Yeah, I definitely need to go to Zion. New moon in September at the Matterhorn. Dude, look, I'm not being funny, but when the uh, when the lockdown finishes, there's going to be clouds. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. As soon as lockdown finishes, it's going to be cloudy. Which image should we do, guys? That one looks pretty cool. Um, let's do an Aurora picture, maybe. Um, actually. Let's do this one. So this was the image that was sent to me by Nicholas in Washington, USA. Taking on an A7 II with a broken on 24 mil. It's actually a panorama that he's already stitched. Oh no, it's a JPEG. Oh, that's the JPEG that he sent me, okay. Um, it's a panorama that he's already stitched and sent to me as a DNG. This was his edit. Which is really nice. I quite like it. Really nice, cool color palette. He's fixed the uh, the coma there on uh, Jupiter quite nicely. So respect for that. But yeah, let's edit this one. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to send you a raw. I'll be doing it again, but it'll probably be for my Patreon supporters only. Do you see the advantage of A7S versus A7S III? I own both, but my A7S is a backup. A7S III is better for photos because you have better detail. The A7S has better noise performance and better video, but the, the A7S III produces such better detail. Um, can't see any difference when exporting for web. Yeah, you won't really see much. Am I interested to go to Zermatt? Of course I'm interested to go to Zermatt. I, I really want to go to Switzerland. Um, do I do other types of photography? I do, I just don't share it online. I do a little bit of daytime landscape photography. Are you running out of ideas for Garden Astro? No, I've got loads to do. Light painting environment. I don't like light painting the environment. A, you're risking other photographers. B, I just like having my environment lit by stars. I think that's really cool. Um, so the white balance of this, mm, something about there, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure how to crop this image. I already cropped it, didn't I? That's right. So. 
that was like the original crop that he sent me. But I really wanted to make Venus a bit more central and a bit more the main subject and have the Milky Way. You know, it's kind of hiding behind these trees. And instead of having it as the main subject, it's kind of putting Venus in the middle ish. Or at least inside this third. And a good way to crop, guys, is to press L twice and then you can darken everything else. And really see what you're doing. Let's bring that down. It's a difficult composition to balance. I don't want that dead space on the right. Something there. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that's a bit more balanced. I like the foreground. It kind of grounds you. You know you're standing on the ground. You've got some nice curves going in. Some nice lines bringing you into this sort of focal area. Milky Way is a really nice backdrop and not even the main subject. And then you've got Jupiter. Not only is it shining really nicely, but you've got a gorgeous reflection on the water. Um, I've already edited this quite a bit, so I'm going to bring the highlights down. Take it easy on the shadows. I don't want that noise. Um, yeah, a little bit of noise reduction. Other than that, it's good. I'm going to jump into Photoshop with this image. See what you guys are asking. Um, I think more like this guy is the track of his ball. It's really good to get. Um, yeah, light painting. I don't like light painting. I like having starlight illuminating my landscape. Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro and I'm ready to take pictures. Thanks for inspiring me. Woo! Enjoy it, man. The Skywatcher is a really, really good tracker. Gus! <laughs> Gus is a Patreon supporter, Jared, so you can you can pipe down and, and Gus is allowed to send me as many roars as he wants. Ooh, what can we do here, guys? Okay, I'm going to use a mid-tones again to do some darkening so i mid-tones one luminosity mask with a curves adjustment if you don't know what luminosity masks are you should really start looking into them because they're so powerful but just a little bit of darkening actually you know what before i do that i completely forgot um i'm gonna bring it into camera raw there's a lot of aberration on the stars oh How do I zoom out? Yeah, you see there's a lot of colour fringing on the stars. So I'm just going to... Yeah. Lens correction. I'm going to extend the purple hue range just to cover all the ranges. Let's try four. Yeah, that's done it. Perfect. So probably three. No, definitely four. So yeah, defringing four, and then you've taken all the color fringing off the stars. So I'm just going to okay that. Um, have I tried to shoot Milky Way on a long lens? Yeah, I mean, 50 millimeter Milky Way looks amazing. So does 135. I thought you can't buy love. <laughs> well, my love's for sale. Have you ever seen Photog Adventure? Some very good stuff. Dude, I was on the Photog Adventure podcast about a year and a half ago. Um, Aaron, yeah, it's Aaron, isn't it? He's a really cool dude. I heard Sony will make an Alpha A7 IV. Yes, they are making an A7 IV, apparently. But I want an A7S III. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a mid-tones one. Curves adjustment. Just to darken everything down a little bit. And then we need to fix this Venus. You know, I used to have a brush that would do it, but I don't think I've got it in my latest um, Photoshop update. 
So I am going to select um, the star with a circular tool. Mm, that wasn't quite it. So I'm going to select the star. I'm going to inverse my selection by doing Control I. And then on a new layer, I'm going to use the clone stamp and I'm going to take this bit of sky here. Oh, damn it. Could not complete the invert command. I'm going to take this bit of sky here and just get rid of that flare. So I'm just going to keep sampling the sky. Yeah, that's doing it. Sample the sky. I'm duplicating a lot of stars, but I'll fix all that uh, in a little bit. Just going to do it roughly for now, guys. Very rough. I uh, maybe I should have feathered the selection a little bit. Damn it. Okay, I'm gonna leave it for now. I mean I should have feathered the selection, but <laughs> um I'm gonna take a soft light layer. I take a soft light layer and try, and try and blend it in a little bit. It looks terrible, I know. I would change it, but for the stream. Hasn't the A7S3 been abandoned? It hasn't been abandoned, but it's been delayed because of the. They need the materials for the PS4, PS5, whatever they're on these days. Do you know what? I might even add like a starburst onto Venus. I made a starburst brush like ages ago. <laughs> it looks terrible. Um. God, that looks awful. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. It doesn't look too bad. going to take the desaturation out of that glow as well. Right, I'm going to jump into Color Effects Pro. Um, ADJ62, hi Alan and chat, new subscriber, you're just getting into astrophotography. Lockdown, yeah, money's tight. Your thoughts on the Omega wind-up tracker? Hmm, the Omega Mini track. I haven't tried it myself, but I've heard it's a little bit fiddly. Um, with the tension spring system. Um, so I don't know. I I I love the move shoot move tracker. I don't know what the difference in price is, but I feel good things about the Omega tracker. It's just the the uh, setup can be a little bit fiddly. I think. Uh, so I've just got a graduated filter here just to darken the sky, and I'm going to use a negative control point just to take the darkening away from these trees. Um, do you know what? That's darkening the Milky Way too much. I think there's a color cast on this image, so I'm going to use a pro contrast layer. I'm going to use the correct color cast. Um, no, apparently there wasn't a color cast. I'm going to use the dynamic contrast as well because that's really good for bringing detail out of the foreground. A dark and light and center, just to vignette the image. I don't want to do that much darkening just yet. And I'm going to put the center on the Milky Way and Venus. That looks good. Not that much. 
that looks good and then I'm gonna check the contrast color range I really like this filter uh, how's the stream going guys I mean the webcam's not working obviously but Starburst looks like my girlfriend's eyelashes. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, awful. Uh, I'm gonna try the glamour glow. Any thoughts on the Nikon Z6? Really good camera. Have I tried to photograph like Atlas Comet? Uh, I did a couple of weeks ago, and I wasn't very impressed, and I haven't bothered trying again since. EQ6R Pro, nice. You should try and create your own gang like Nick Page and Adam and that fat funny guy. <laughs> the F4 group. I'd be like the F2.8 group because I always use F2.8. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I like that glamour glow. Uh, this is enough. I'm going to go back into Photoshop and do some things. Far better than yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yesterday was like an absolute nightmare. What? Have I been streaming for an hour and 20 minutes? Jesus. 174 people in here. Man. This is cool. I want to do more streaming. I wish my webcam was working, but I think it's died. Let me see if I can get my webcam working, guys. No, the webcam's officially frozen. Right. I want to make this Milky Way pop a little bit, guys. I'm going to show you a little trick. If I can get my computer to work. Alan's Angels. No. Oh, my God. Right. Um, my computer might get a little bit jittery right now because I'm going to create a bunch of luminosity masks. I'm creating some lights, luminosity masks because I want to make the light areas of the Milky Way a little bit brighter. How can you send me rolls to edit? Um, I have way too many rolls right now and in future I'm only going to accept rolls from my Patreon supporters if I can get this stream working a little bit better. So let's take a look at these lights masks. That's a lights one mask. My God, it's loading square by square, just like the dial-up internet used to back in the 90s. Maybe a lights two. That would target the Milky Way quite nicely, I think. Yeah. So I'm gonna create a new dodge layer. I'm gonna do some dodging and burning. What is my laptop specs? My laptop specs are really good. It's an i7 with 32 gigabytes of RAM, SSD, uh, an NVIDIA 1050 GTX graphics card. It's just that the, it gets really hot when I do heavy stuff. The CPU gets really hot and um, you end up with thermal throttling. So it's really annoying. Anyway, I've made a dodge layer, which is basically a new layer with overlay as the blend mode and I'm going to control and click on lights too so that when I do my dodging I'm only dodging on the the lights too so let's see how that works out hopefully we can bring this Milky Way out just a little bit I don't want to do it too much because I feel like Venus is the main subject of this image anyway Alan's astronauts yes that's a much better idea uh, <laughs> Uh, Daniel Corden, he, what, what, Alan, use the gradient tool and then radial gradient as a brush 
for free hand painting if you use mouse. Daniel called and used this, and he said it's almost like using a Wacom tablet. Yeah, I've I've seen Daniel Corden's editing workflow. Like he just radio filters everything. Um, I don't know. I'm not. I don't like it. I mean, it works for him. His images are, are, are pretty amazing, but I like using luminosity masks and brushes, basically. So let's see if I've actually done anything good to this Milky Way. Have you tried putting the frozen webcam on? It should cool it down. Very funny. How did you feel to have some of your work noticed by NASA? Um, the first time it happened, really, like, chuffed, but now I just, I kind of don't care about having my images recognised by other people or corporations, I like having my images appreciated by me, that's all that matters to me these days, is that I like the image. Um, so yeah, did you, can you see that Milky Way pop? Using the lights to control the dodge. Just makes that Milky Way pop right up. Look at that. I'm going to bring it down because it's a little bit too much. Nice. Dude, your stream is stuttering. Yep, you must be new here. TK panels up to V7. Time to upgrade. No, I don't, I, I don't like all the new upgrades that they've done. There's just like... I feel like they've overcomplicated it. I really like the simplicity of V4. It's so simple. Now they've done all of these, like, infinity masks and all of these crazy, crazy things. So I'm going to do a color balance layer, guys. And I'm going to go into the shadows and put some blue into the shadows. Try the highlights. See if I can warm up the highlights just a little bit. And get a bit of pink in there. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Yeah, you see how it was like really green? There was like a real green tint to the image. And then with a bit of blue in the shadows. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. I'm starting to really like this image. But I think the blacks could be a little bit deeper. So I'm going to come into levels. And yeah, I'm just going to darken these blacks ever so slightly. That's too much. That's enough. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a touch. Perfect. Um, and I think that's it. I'm really happy with this image. Let's take a look at the original edit by Nicholas. So, Nicholas went for a different crop. Yeah, I cropped out a lot of the top right. Um, and he was very blue, for me at least, on the on the white balance um, and that was my edit not too dissimilar to be honest the Milky Way dodging kind of helped a little bit a little bit of a glow to Jupiter looks quite cool um, yeah different color palettes but it's a nice little image looks like a really nice coast um, I think that's going to be the last one, guys. It's 9 o'clock, and I'm hungry. Your boy is hungry, but I'll answer a few more questions before I leave. Um, how frequently will you live stream? I'd like to do it, like, I don't know, every week or two weeks or month. I don't know, but my computer's not very good at streaming, so I'll see if I can update things and maybe get a desktop computer. Um... I think it's cool because I can interact with you guys, which I really like. I could always make a video, but um, I like this live chat and answering your guys' questions. It's really cool. I'm new in astronomy. My Skywatcher refractor with 60mm is not good enough for astral photography. I don't really know. I'm sorry. I'm not much of a deep space expert. Um, so, I'm sorry. Was La Palma or Chile more impressive for you? Um, I think at first La Palma was just because I really like being on a mountain. I like being high above the clouds, looking down on little cities and towns. 
like for me that's just like my favorite feeling and experience above the clouds under the stars really high on a mountain i don't know that's where i feel like most alive but in the grand scheme of things i think chile was more impressive because there are so many different landscapes so many places that felt like another world and yeah just really vast really high altitude really like you know you felt like you're on mars so i think in the grand scheme of things chile was more impressive but la palma had that like early novelty which kind of wore off after a while um thank you for the stream thank you so much guys thank you for tuning in like it's been really cool um i hope you guys have learned something at least um do you shoot flat neutral color profile or normal which is better for pushing image on photoshop um the prof if you shoot in raw the profile that you use doesn't make a single difference so it doesn't matter you coughing doesn't sound good yeah i'm still not completely um <laughs> Still not completely healed from my recent sickness. I'm on some new antibiotics again. I started some new antibiotics yesterday. And I've got some steroids now for my lungs and my nose. So um, hopefully I'll be back to 100% soon. 10 weeks to La Palma. You're not going to La Palma, I guess. <laughs> I think you mean Tenerife, right? We're not going to Tenerife. I mean, that's going to be cancelled. That looks like Vancouver Island in Canada. Do you know where it might be? I don't know. Where is no, it's Washington. Washington, USA. Thank you for keeping our spirits up during these challenging times. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for keeping my spirits up. We're all isolated, but we're never alone. Yep, you're damn right. We've never been more connected than we have now. What F number do you feel you use the most? F two point eight. Uh, with the Sony 24mm lens, I use f2 the most, but generally f2 and f2.8. Subscriber at Washington. Wait, is that your image? Nicholas Michael, no. Um, your subscriber at Washington, USA. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the USA soon. I really need to come on a big USA trip. I learned I wasn't the fave. <laughs> That's because you're, you're my best friend. You're not my client, Jared. Um... How can we submit picks for the next time? I think the next time it will be my Patreon supporters can send me rules, but we'll see. Plenty of time at the moment for more live streams. Cool, I'll, I'll, I'll try and do some more live streams. It's been really fun. Um... Dun, 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 dun. Next door. 600D with a basic kit lens, is it a good start? Or looking at a Sony A6000? People say no, as there's a lot of software support. What? No, there's no difference in software support. And I would recommend any of the Sony A6000 series over old Canon crop sensors any day. They're really good for astrophotography. Um... Do I plan to increase the number of workshops you do each year? Mm, no. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, workshops are... W workshops are really... Uh, stressful, to be honest, and quite heavy on, the, on, on, on me. Um, I get really stressed because I really want to make sure that my clients are getting like the best experience and the best opportunities and they're learning lots and they're having fun and they're enjoying themselves so I, I i end up getting quite stressed on workshops so i don't want to increase the number of workshops too much um but ultimately i do have to to do workshops i do enjoy doing them they're so rewarding but i wouldn't want to do too many because it would just be so exhausting that i couldn't offer the quality of a workshop that i could if that makes sense where am I from? I'm from Wales. You say are a gent. Thank you for the live stream. Thank you for tuning it in. Your voice is relaxing. Thanks very much. Um, 
How can we join Patreon if we can? Yeah, just jump on patreon.com forward slash Alan Wallace and you can get my presets as a Patreon and some other perks as well. Thanks for the live stream. Thanks, guys. I'm glad I was able to actually live stream. So that was cool. Hopefully we can do them again. Get the webcam fixed for next time. Yeah, it worked at the start and then it froze and I haven't been able to to get it back. So hopefully next time I can find some better settings for the stream and uh, we can have the webcam working at the same time as well. Come to Seattle. Yes, I do need to come to Seattle. Right, guys, thank you so, so much for tuning in. Hopefully I can do some more of these live streams, um, do some editing and take requests and and all of that stuff. So, um, huge, huge thank you for tuning in. I'll leave the video on my YouTube channel if anybody wants to catch up and watch the rest of it. Um, and hopefully we'll do it again soon. But thank you for all of your amazing questions and your messages of support. It's been...